Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I am answering a question upon a student's request, question 10A from the October 2019 paper of the IGCSE um, Cambridge Paper 4, um, Variant 1, 0580 syllabus. And this is a question on sequences, number patterns, and the first part of the question tells us to complete the table for the fifth term and the nth term of each sequence. So basically you got these terms and you got to find the next term. Basically it's the next term, fifth term here is the next term and the general term, the nth term for the sequence. So the first one, if we have a look what's happening here, you can see that going from 9 to 5 and then 5 to 1 and then 1 to minus 3 it's like you're going down by 4 each time subtracting 4 each time how you get from one term to the other you're taking away 4 so if I have a negative 3 and I take away another 4 I'm going to get to negative 7 all right so the nth term for the sequence is going to be such that you know you have to go down by 4s each time okay so when you have something like this um, the common mistake that students make is they say, oh, n minus 4. And that's completely wrong. All right, because this is actually going to go up by 1 each time, and it's going to start from uh, minus 3, basically. So if you think about the first term of this, it's going to be n equals 1. That's going to be minus 3. When n equals 2, it's going to be minus 2. n equals 3, you're going to get minus 1, and so on. So it's going to go up by 1, because it always goes up by the number that's multiplying the n, which is 1 here. So in this case, you want it to go down by 4, so we know it's going to have something to do with negative 4n. That will make something go down by 4s. But the thing is, we want it to start from 9. Now this would start, okay, this, this sequence would start from negative 4. When you put n equals 1 for the first term, you get negative 4. So what do you have to add to negative 4 so that you're going to get 9? Well, it's going to be 13. So if you add 13 to negative 4, you're going to get 9. 13 minus 4 is 9. So if you write this as minus 4n plus 13, you're going to you're going to go up in 4s, and you're going to start from 9. So if you just test it out, when you put n equals 1, you're going to get minus 4 plus 13, which is 9. When n equals 2, you're going to have minus um, 8 plus 13. Minus 8 plus 13 is 5. Okay, and when you put n equals 3, you have um, minus 12 plus 13, which is 1, and so on. So you can see it's giving us the right sequence. n equals 4, you'll have 13 minus 16, which is negative 3, and so on and so forth. So you can see that that's the correct sequence. So it's not going to be n minus 4, it's going to be minus 4 times n. And then you have to adjust it to start at the right place. Now the next type of sequence is a different type of sequence. It's not quite the same. This one is a... Um, it's like it, it changes in a different way than <coughs> the first one. The first one, it's going down by constant time, every, a constant amount every time. This one is going up by 5, then up by 7, then up by 9. So you can think about it, it's going to go up by 11. So that's going to be 36. All right? Um, that's one way we can think about it. Another way we can think about it is these numbers are all square numbers. Okay? They're all square numbers. So you can think about it in that sense as well, that these are all square numbers. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36 are all square numbers. So we can think about the first term. The first term is 2 squared. And the second term is 3 squared. And the third term is 4 squared. And the fourth term is 5 squared. And the fifth term is 6 squared. 6 squared. Okay? So you can see that the... When n equals 1, you got 2 squared. When n equals 2, you got 3 squared. When n equals 3, you got 4 squared. n equals 4, you got 5 squared. n equals 5, you got 6 squared. So every time whatever n is, you're adding 1 to it and then squaring it. That means the nth term is going to be add 1 to n and then square it. That's one way of finding the nth term of the sequence. That's the easiest way, way of finding it. When you have the numbers, are basically, you can recognize them as square numbers. Okay, so it doesn't start from... 1 squared, the first term is 2 squared. So every term you have, you have to add 1 to it and then square it. That's why the fifth term is 6 squared, fourth term is 5 squared, so the nth term is n plus 1 all squared. Okay, and then the next term, the next sequence, again, you should be able to recognize these numbers. These, these are all numbers that you should be able to recognize. So for the next term, you see you have um, here 1, 8, 27, 64, this next sequence. These are all basically cube numbers. This is basically 1 cubed. 
and 2 cubed and 3 cubed and 4 cubed and 5 cubed. 5 cubed is 125. These are numbers that you should all be able to recognize. Okay, you should all be able to recognize these numbers like the square numbers and the cubed numbers. You should recognize them. And the first term is 1 cubed and the second term is 2 cubed and the third term is 3 cubed. So the nth term is n cubed. All right, and then the next sequence is another type of sequence that we should know. And that is called one where you can see that every time to get to the next term, you're not like adding the same amount this time. You are actually multi. You can see every time you have to multiply by the same number each time to get to the next term. This is like 8 times 2, 16 times 2, 32 times 2. So 64 times 2 is 128. So the first term, to get the next term, you have to multiply by 2. So every time you have to multiply by 2, so we know it's got something to do with 2 to the power of something. Okay, If you're multiplying by 2 each time, it's going to have some relation to 2 to the power of something. This is called an exponential sequence. It's different ways of finding the nth term, but um, you can use a formula if you want to. I personally don't like to use formula in this stage at IGCSE. I like for people to be able to think. Um, you don't really need the formula for anything else. So I would say, I would suggest you think about, I know it's 2 to the, <laughs> if you multiply by 2, it's definitely got something to do with 2 to the power of something. So what I'm going to do is I'm thinking, what is 8 as 2 to the power of something? Well, that's 8 is 2 cubed. And the second term, 2 to the power of 16, well, that's, sorry, um, 16 is 2 to the power of 4. And 32 is 2 to the power of 5. And 64 is 2 to the power of 6. Okay, so we can say the, the 64 is 2 to the power of 6. So the fifth term is going to be 2 to the power of 7. Okay, and does that work? We can just see, make sure. 2 to the power of 7, <coughs> sorry, is 128. So every time this power, okay, for the first term, it says 2 to the power of 3. For the second term, 2 to the power of 4. For the third term, it says 2 to the power of 5. For the fourth term, 2 to the power of 6. For the fifth term, 2 to the power of 7. So the nth term, every, as you can see, the term, the actual position, you're adding 2 to it for to the power. So it's going to be 2 to the power of n plus 2 in brackets. So every time the power is 2 more than the term. Okay, so two, the first term, 2 to the power of 3. Second, 2 to the power of 4, and so on. So these are the nth terms of these sequences. Okay, so that's how we can uh, deal with question number 10a. All right, so we have a linear sequence. We have a quadratic sequence, we have a cubic sequence, and we have an exponential sequence. All the different type of sequences that we should know about. Okay, so um, that's important for us to understand how to do questions like that. Now, part B is a slightly different type of problem. Here we have what's called a Fibonacci sequence. A Fibonacci sequence is one, as they tell us, that you have to add the previous two terms to get to the next term. Okay, that's a rule-to-rule -rule, uh, sequence. So four, two, <coughs> 2 plus 4 is 6, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 10 is 16. That one is pretty simple. Now for the next one, okay, they haven't given us these terms, so we don't know what we have to add to this. But because of this pattern, it's not that difficult to deal with. So, for example, I can say this term, let me call it x. So this term is going to be the sum of these two terms, so it's going to be 1 plus x. And this term is going to be the sum of these two terms, so it's going to be 1 plus 2x. And this term, 11, is going to be the sum of these two terms. Okay, so you can make an equation. In fact, I can make an equation from even this one. I can say 1 plus x. Uh, actually, I can't because I, have that. I don't have the number. I have to use this one. So I have 1 plus x it, plus 1 plus 2x. This term plus this term gives me 11. If I add these two terms, it's going to get 11. So if I call this term x, then I know this term is the sum of the previous two terms. And I know this term is the sum of these two terms. Okay? And I know that this term, 11, is the sum of the previous two terms. So 1 plus x plus 1 plus 2x equals 11. So this way, I have an equation which I can solve quite easily. This is going to be 3x plus 2 equals 11. 3x equals 9 x equals 3. Take 2 from both sides, divide by 3. So that x equals 3. So let's see if that works first. That's 3. That's 3, <laughs> 3 plus 1 is 4. And that's 1 plus 6 is 7. Let's see if it works. 1 plus 3 gives you 4. 3 plus 4 gives you 7. 4 plus 7 gives you 11. Yes, that's right. So 
Those are our answers there. One, th <laughs> one, three, four, seven. Okay, so we've got our answers there. One, three, four, seven. And that's fine. And then for the next one, we can do something similar. Let, let me call it, for example, uh, y this time. So this is going to be, if I add these, I'm going to get y minus 1. And if I add y min 1 minus 1 with y minus 1, I'm going to get y minus 2. Okay. And then, so if I add that y minus 1, that's y minus 2. That plus that is y minus 2. That's right. Now, if I add these together, I'm going to get 1. So I've got y minus 1 plus y minus 2 equals 1. That's 2y minus 3 equals 1. I have to add 3 to both sides, so 2y equals 4, so y equals 2. So this means this is a 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, minus 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So it looks like that works as well. So this is going to be a 2, and this is going to be minus 1, 1, and 0. So you got 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 1 plus 1 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. Okay, so setting up, a setting up a little equation helps us to solve that quite quickly. And then part C, it says here, um, you have the sequence a third and three quarters and four sevenths and seven elevenths and 11 over 18. One term of the sequence is P over Q. Find in terms of P and Q the next term in this sequence. So we have to know how to get to the next term from a particular term. Now, this sequence, it's a bit of a strange one if you look at it in initially. Because most people will think, all right, you have to go up by 2 and then go up by 1, then go up by 3, then go up by 4. It's a bit of a weird kind of um, way it's changing. Plus 2, if you look at just the numerator, plus 1, then plus 3, and that's plus 4. It's not really seeing any pattern to that. Okay, and the denominator is kind of similar. Okay, the numbers actually are the same as these, but just 3, 4, 7, 11, 3, 4, 7, 11. Okay, so how do you sort out this sequence? You have to think a little bit, right? What you, what you can see is you can see there's some sort of pattern. One of the things that you notice is that this number is repeated up there. So if the sequence is P over Q, see this is this 3 goes up there, and this 4 goes up there, 7 goes up there, this 11 goes up there. Uh, so if you have a t sequence P over Q, the next term, the Q is going to be up there. That's one thing you notice. All right, so I'm going to have a Q in the numerator. If a term is P over Q, the next term is going to have a Q in the numerator. And the other thing you'll notice, if I add these two numbers together, I get this number. So 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 7 is 11, 7 plus, <coughs> 7 plus 11 is 18. So it's like adding these two numbers gives you the next denominator. So if, the, if I add these two together, I'm going to get P plus Q. So it's going to be Q over P plus Q. That's how you get the next term um, or a term, if, if a term is P over Q, the next term will be Q over P plus Q. Now, this is a kind of question that normally comes in the end of paper four. And it's sometimes you get a question that you've not been exposed to a similar type of question before. And it's kind of like done on purpose for you to, to see who's going to be able to think. And, uh, you know, it kind of sometimes this uh, differentiates the A star student from the A student. So you have to be able to, you know, think and, you know, look for patterns, maybe you haven't seen something like that before, all right? So you always get something where you have to think a bit more deeply, think kind of outside of the box sometimes. So it's not like a, a normal type of sequence here. So when it says, once you've worked that out, uh, this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, the next sequence is going to be pretty simple. You just, that 18 goes up there, and the sum of those two goes down there. So it's going to be 18 over 29, 11 plus 18. So you put the denominator of the previous term in the numerator and you add the numerator and denominator together to give you the next denominator. So there we have the answer for C part two. So it, it requires a bit of thought um, for you to, you know, looking, looking at the pattern, seeing how they, you know, are related to each other. But eventually, if you think a little bit, you'll get, get it. Okay, so that's the answer for question number 10 from this October 2019 paper four for um, variant one. Now, the older papers... Or, you know, I will be um, answering questions upon request. The new syllabus is from 2020. I'm going to be trying to um, do as many of those as I can. But if there's any questions you have from any paper, you are welcome to send me a message. Um, and um, I will try my best to answer the questions that you have as soon as I can. All right. So you just have to tell me the paper, 
the question number, the variant, and the year, and I'll try and do that as soon as I can. The newer papers, I will endeavor to try to answer all of them um, in the next few months, um, and the, from the new syllabus, but the, the older syllabus, I will answer according to request. Okay, so thank you for watching. Um, other questions which are from this paper when I eventually, if I get requested to answer from this paper, I will put in the playlist over here. Other questions from this topic of number patterns and sequences, I'm going to put in this playlist over here. Um, um, these playlists will appear at the end of the video and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Um, you can check my index of uh, work um, from IGCSE and from also from um, AS and A-Level, um, the Edexcel International A-Level um, Board. In the description, you'll find uh, links to um, some playlists and some um, index that I have, topic-wise and paper-wise. So you might find that useful. Thank you for watching. See you soon.